You know, there's this, uh, there's this stigma associated with this thing that is a high fence. Anti-hunters think that we are not fair chase when we hunt behind something like this. I don't know. It's here in West Texas, it's here in South Texas, it's here in the hill country of Texas, that you've got this thing that is out of Africa. What is it about high fenced hunting? Just mention that you're hunting behind a high fence to a group of hunters, and you'll get a wide variety of despairing looks. You may even get a high five. Make that same mention on social media today, and you're likely to get verbally abused. High fence hunting is not hunting, it's killing. High fence hunting constrains animal movements and thus it's not fair. High fence hunting is put and take. Every week trailers of new animals arriving for the rich and the privileged to shoot for their pleasure. So what's the truth? What's the authentic truth behind high fence hunting? The biggest question that people ask is, why? Why do you have a high fence? Why don't you just have a low fence? There's a lot of money in this game, and I think you can almost have to have a high fence to make sure you keep it. What game is that, Stephen? The big exotics. Is it a game? Sure. You don't think so? You tell me. I think it's a game. I may call it a lifestyle. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean there. Yeah, of course it's a lifestyle. It's definitely a lifestyle of a place like this. Eight thousand acres. I drove in this place and I was like, I couldn't believe how big it was. It's Just a, the, the, the drive in. Yeah. It's a good getaway for sure. Is this place better because of you having a high fence in terms of the productivity, the biological diversity, the quality of animals? Is this place better or because of the high fence? Yes, to all those, maybe not the biological diversity. As far as the quality of the animals and the quantity and how healthy they are, yes, they have benefited. But it wasn't by accident either. Purposeful. Yes. So how many species on the property? 13 on the property. Can you list them? I'll do my best. Zebra. Zebra. So Excuse me. Zebra. Zebra. Do you say addicts or adax? Addicts. Addicts. Phala. Axis. Black buck. 
Oryx, Scimitar Oryx, Hemsbuck, Red Lechway, Impala, Grant's Gazelle, Wildebeest. I'm missing one. White tailed deer. Yeah, yeah white tail. Quail. quail. We have Bob White's in, blue quail here. Turkey. Scale, scale quail. Lots of Rio Grande turkey. They oh, love you didn't that tell cruise. me that. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I got to get you to leave on Friday. I'm driving here <laughs> in the spring. We do a hunt in the spring. You'll need to come back. Heck yeah. here in West Texas, it's here in South Texas, it's here in the hill country of Texas, that you've got this thing that is out of Africa. You've got these beautiful African species of wildlife flourishing in a landscape that they're not native to. And yet you've got a number of these species that are endangered back on their native ranges. So is there an opportunity because of the high fence to supplement these endangered species back into their native environments. That is the conundrum. That is this conundrum of conservation versus preference versus ethics versus a divisive thing that in the hunting community says that this is good and this is bad. fence does is allow you as a game manager to control your habitat better, control your animal population better, and grow better animals. So it all started though, our grandfather went to Africa over 20 times. Yep. Loved Africa. Yep. And he, is, since we were young boys hunting with him, he was always looking for the right piece of property to buy where we could all hunt together, have holidays. And he found this place and he always wanted to have a, what he called a, little piece of Africa in Texas. And it was never intended truly as hunting. It was more bringing family and friends and seeing the wildlife and then they just reproduce and you've got to manage them and it, it just grew from there. Mm -hmm. What do you think about high fence? You own one. You obviously don't have an issue with it. I don't have an issue with it, but it's not a tool for hunting, it's a tool for, like I said, preservation and conservation. We didn't put the fence up to make hunting easier or to make it better. We just put the fence up to maintain and bring some stuff in. What's your largest wildlife population here? Scimitar horned orcs. The last count in January was 412. But you've had it as high as 600? 634, 32. Wow. Do you know how many are in the wild in North Africa? I do not. Not 415 or something like you just said? No kidding, wow. You have more scimitar horned oryx on this property than in the wild. Wow. 
it would be pretty darn incredible if the scimitar horned rx population here could supplant some genetics or some herd back in its native range shit how cool would it be one day 30 million dollar project send a bunch back take a thousand scimitar horned oryx back to africa with all the ranches in texas it'd be easy totally doable it's totally doable thousand addicts thousand dharma gazelle there would be a lot of people to jump on board to be a part of that because mm -hmm. you'd want the world to know what hunters are doing for wildlife conservation. And the high fences made it possible. And the high fences made it possible for a species that was endangered in its native range to thrive out of Africa. This morning, you were in a helicopter, and you didn't find a scimitar oryx. I have 40 plus. Now, that's fair chase hunting. If you can't find one in a helicopter, you know it's fair chase hunting.